Lips of a bite, no reorder in the order. Yes, who is an order? Yes, I'd come up so sushaskata. Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments to share this message with you. We do this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the Feast of Holy Etchmiadzin. In the Armenian Church, we commemorate this day, this day in June. But before it, we have a few different events that take place during the week. Namely, we have the Feast of St. Hripsime and St. Gayane, which took place on Monday and Tuesday. And then yesterday was the Feast of St. Gregory the Illuminator. Deliverance from the pit, from Horvirab. Now what does this all have to do, all of these dates and all of these names? You're saying, wait, didn't I just tune in to get a message about God? Well, let me tell you, this message is the message that well, it tells us how we got this message of God. Yes, exactly. You know, there's a big trend these days to talk about God without religion. And saying, let's say no to religion, but let's say yes to God. But there's a way that we understand God. If that religion, that structure wasn't there, you wouldn't get it. Even the Bible, believe it or not, did not fall out of heaven. No, it took a church to put together the Bible. And the proof of that is, well, look at what happened after Jesus was resurrected. Was there a Bible? No, but there was a church. After 40 days, he ascended into heaven. Was there a Bible? No, but there was a church. In fact, Thaddeus and, Ar and Bartholomew come to Armenia in the years 40 and 45. Was there a Bible? No. Actually, there wasn't a Bible as we know it. Those books weren't put together. Especially the New Testament wasn't put together into the latter part of the first century. But there was a church. There was a structure. And that structure is very important to remember, especially when we're talking about the theme of Etchmiadzin. Because Etchmiadzin to us is the center of where Armenian Christianity began. And this is, this is a, a, an important topic for us to remember because a lot of times we want to believe that somehow this message came to us just miraculously without any structure or without any but just somehow a lightning bolt hit us and we woke up and we said oh today i'm christian no many people sacrificed many people gave their lives many people stood up and fought lived their lives for this faith, this faith which is about Jesus Christ, about Jesus Christ saving us, saving our souls, saving our being. And the structure of the church is there to bring that there. Jesus, in his words, says it without any hesitation. He says, I leave you, my church. He says, and that church, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What does that mean? that that body, his church, is there. It's an important one. Remember there was that passage, where if you remember, uh, we're not, we, if you remember we spoke about it a few months ago, where uh, Jesus says, you know, people are saying different things about me. And uh, who do people think that I am? And some of them said, oh, people think that you're John the Baptist, somehow reincarnated, or you're one of the prophets, you're Elijah. And Jesus turns it around and he says, but who do you say that I am? And it's there that Peter stands up and he says, you are the son of the living God. And Peter says, on this, on this statement, on this proclamation that you have made, that Christ is the center of our lives, the son of the living God, on that proclamation, I shall build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Well, it, this comes to us 2,000 years later, and it's still very, very relevant and very true that Jesus Christ establishes the church, establishes his body, and that church has a commission to do the work of Christ in this world. Now, how does that come about? Well, in the, four, in the third century, excuse me, in the third century, latter part of the third century, in the 280s, yeah, a long time ago, um, there was this beautiful woman named Terepsimeh. Beautiful, beautiful woman. And she caught the eye of the king. And the king's name was Durtad. You probably heard about him. And uh, this king says, hey, I want, to, I want to be with this woman. And 
And Ibsen said, no, I am one of the sisters. I belong to this convent. And the, well, so to speak, the reverend mother of the, the convent, her name was Gayane. Together they resisted the, the, the advances of the king. And because of this, they were tortured. Because of this, they had to find and seek their safety, but they were killed. Later on, it was St. Gregory the Illuminator who was put into a pit because of his beliefs by the same king. And that same king eventually came to terms with the reality, and he delivered St. Gregory from the pit after 13 years of being tortured. St. Gregory came out of the pit in the year 301, and he converted the king, and with the king, the king made a proclamation that Christianity will be the official religion of the Armenian people, the state religion. Now, I know that's difficult for us to understand right now because we have so many freedoms. It's hard to imagine that somebody would impose that this is the official religion. But in that time, you've got to remember that society and structures were different. And so Armenia became the first nation to adopt Christianity as its official religion. Now, in 301, St. Gregory came out of the pit. It was two years later that he saw this beautiful vision of Etch Miadzin. Etch Miadzin is a compound word. Etch means descent, descending, Ichnal in Armenian, okay? Etch Miadzin, well, actually, that's a compound word too. Zin, Zinel, means to be born. Miadzin means the only born, only begotten. Etch Miadzin means the descent of the only begotten. Isn't that beautiful? Well, this described his vision. In his vision, he saw Jesus Christ come and say, this is where you will build the church of the Armenian people. Taking a golden hammer, he nailed four nails into the ground, designating four spots on which the church would be built. That's where Etch Miadzin today, if you go, take a look at this picture right now. You see this beautiful church. Many of you have seen it in your churches. You see the beautiful domes of this. This is Etch Miadzin, the cathedral. Isn't that beautiful? You look at it and you see all the beautiful work that's been put into it. This has been standing for 1,700 years. Sure, renovations here and there, but basically the idea, it's around that vision that St. Gregory had. St. Gregory the Illuminator had this vision that the, the only begotten son descended and said, this is where you will build the church of the Armenian people. And Etch Miadzin, since that time, has been the center of the Armenian faith. Now, what does that mean to us? One of our Catholicoses, the late Karekin I, he was Catholicos uh, from right around the middle of the 1990s to the end of 1990s. He was a Catholicos for a few years only, but a blessed memory. He made the proclamation. He said, Echmiadzin is not only the building. He says, Echmiadzin is mission. And I want you to think about that. In fact, that's the reflection that we have today. We spoke very briefly, of course, about Haripsime, about Gayane, about St. Gregory. And I invite you to go and look up their stories. You can find them on the internet. You could find them in many textbooks about the Armenian church. It's a beautiful and fascinating story. But what I want to come down to today is the message. Etch Miadzin is mission. What does that mean? It means that the only begotten Son coming down and making His home in our lives. It means that each of us is responsible for bringing that Son of God, that only begotten Son of God, into our lives. Right now, not in some location, but in the most precious location of all. And if you can feel it, this is where He is hammering those four nails right into our beings, right into our souls, right into ourselves. And this is where each of us has a challenge, to become the harbor, to become that place where Christ is radiating, where Christ is living. That's what it means, Etch Miadzin's mission. It is a mission for our churches. You know, in the diocese, dioceses are made up of many parishes. And parishes are made up in Armenian. It's a beautiful word. It's called Ojach. 
Ojach means that little furnace, that little stove. Because, in fact, if you, if you could picture it, in many of the villages you would stand up on a small little hill and you'd look up and you'd see the little smokestacks coming out of the houses. Because each house had an ojach, had a small little stove from which the, st the, from which the smoke would come. So basically you could see the families by counting the smokestacks. Well, each parish in our diocese begins with the family. The central church, this is the number one church. It's your family. It's when you sit down with your children, when you sit down with your parents. It's when you sit down with your loving spouses, with your brothers and your sisters. Each one of those are an ojach, are a church where etch miadzin is the mission, where the descent of the only begotten, where Jesus Christ is the foundation. Jesus Christ says, this is where my home will be. And what does that mean? Well, we know that. Jesus Christ is love. That means this is where love will be the law. In each of our homes, in each of our ojachs, in each of those homes, we have Jesus Christ. That's our first church. Now, each of those ojachs, each of those homes comes together and they form a parish. And we have St. James, we have St. Mary, we have St. Peter. We have many churches that aren't even named after, after saints, but are named after uh, things that are so precious to us in our faith. For instance, Holy Trinity, Holy Resurrection. These are also parishes. Now, each of these parishes make up what we call a diocese. Diocese is a collection of parishes. Now, the dioceses all come together and they make up what is called the Armenian Church, all under the umbrella of Holy Etchmiadzin, the center in Armenia. It's in a town called Var Shabad. If you go to Armenia, you, you can't miss it. You've got to go there. It's one of the most beautiful beautiful structures that we have because in that structure we see each stone one on top of the other we see the domes all of them pointing to one central mission that Christ has descended Christ is in our midst you know in every divine liturgy in every badarak that we celebrate when we get together there's one portion where we stop and we greet one another with a holy kiss we kiss, we actually embrace one another and we say, Christ is in our midst. Christos imechmer haid netzav. Now think about that for a moment. What does that mean? It means etch miadzin. It means that Christ is descended. It means the only begotten is now in our midst. And we have that mission. From church, from parish, to the families, from families to parishes, from parishes to dioceses, from dioceses to the entire church. One single mission that Jesus Christ is in our midst. That is what Etch Miadzin is all about. Today we have a lot to be thankful for. Most importantly, besides all of the things that God has given us, He has given us the ability to love, the ability to serve, the ability to extend ourselves to one another. And this is what we say thank you for. We say Etch Miadzin. God has given us the best. Let's take advantage of that. Let's take that best. Let's take Jesus Christ into all aspects of our lives, realizing that the church is there. It is the body of Christ. The church, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Not because I said it, but because the one who cannot lie, Jesus Christ said, this is my body. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. This is where I am. This is where I shall always be. And you can find me in Etchmiadzin, in that home, in that church, in that parish, in that diocese, in the place where love is real. So we congratulate you on this beautiful day of Etchmiadzin and make Etchmiadzin real in your lives. Hey, if you're not involved in a parish, go down to our diocesan website, pull down the tab that says parishes, and you'll find a parish that's close to you. Call up the priest, call up the people that are in charge over there and say, hey, I, I want to make my 
part I want to bring my participation to Etchmiadzin, to the mission, to this beautiful mission that is a mission of love. And get involved in your church. If you want to get involved with me, you'll find me at epostle.net. That's apostolic evangelism for an electronic and expanding universe. So until next week, let's remind one another that you know the, the world is full of the beauty of God with the light of God. Let's be the ones who who spread that light, that love of God, and do it always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.